Well, praise God and welcome to everybody that is listening and watching our broadcast. And we just thank God for you all joining us today on this Sunday morning as we continue to worship and praise God in the name of Jesus. Thank you all, Antioch, for our pre-broadcast praise and worship. And I just praise God that he has blessed us and caused us to walk in a supernatural manifestation of his revelation. We're going to get into the word today as we continue to talk about who is the Holy Spirit. And what we've been doing in these messages is that we have been introducing you to the Holy Spirit and what his ministry is in our lives. Now, God gave us the Holy Spirit for this purpose. He gave us the Holy Spirit. And I want you all to repeat this after me because this is so powerful and this is so against the norm that's going on in the church and in the world today. So just say this with me. God gave me the Holy Spirit so that I could be supernatural. Let's say that one more time. God gave me the Holy Spirit so that I could be supernatural. That's exactly why he gave you the Holy Spirit. He prepared our physical bodies that are moral, immortal, and they are, are corrupt. And yet he had to prepare our physical bodies to receive him living inside of us. You remember when Jesus said that you can't put new wine into old wineskins? Because if you put new wine into old wineskins, then the wineskins would burst and the wine would run out. Well, our bodies are the old wineskins. They're mortal. They're corrupt because of sin. God used to be able to live inside the body of man when he first created him because his body was perfect. So when sin came, God had to leave out of the body of man. Why did he have to leave out? Because had he stayed inside of that sinful man, he would have exploded. And the Holy Spirit would not have had a man to live in or a woman to live in. But when Jesus came and he broke the power of sin and fulfilled God's divine claim of righteousness so that we could be freed from the power of sin, God then sent the Holy Spirit because of what Jesus did. And the Holy Spirit was able to renew our bodies to a point where we could actually receive God coming to live back inside of us. Even though we still have a mortal body, even though we still have a carnal nature, and even though we still have a propensities and proclivities to do that which God does not want us to do, the Holy Spirit has made it possible for God to come and live inside of you and me so that we can all receive God's fellowship. He has actually turned these mortal bodies, these bodies that ache and pain and these bodies that uh, are not supernatural by nature, by themselves, and he has turned them into his temples or his worship temples, his worship house, his tabernacle. He has come to live inside of us. And through the Holy Spirit, he has come to make us supernatural. And the way that you become supernatural is that you must be led by the spirit of God who has come to live on the inside of you now. And when you do that, you will walk in the power of God. So we're going to continue to talk about the power of God as we began to talk about it last uh, last uh, week. Now, I want you to go to Matthew 28 uh, when Jesus says something very powerful here. Notice what he said here in Matthew 28. It says, and Jesus came and spake unto them, his disciples, saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. So we see Jesus giving that commandment, saying that all power in heaven and in earth is given unto me. Now, I want you to go somebody. You remember when we were talking about power and we were talking about the seven words of power and, and remember what God said, uh, the seven types and words of power, dunamis, ishkas, exousia, 
Kratos, Megaliotis, RK, and Energeia. Now, what I want to talk about today is the power RK. Because RK, that, that word RK power, what it talks about, it talks about to the far most outermost limits or to the highest level or to the farthest extreme level of something. I want you to understand that. That's what that word RK means. Uh, so what we're talking about here is the highest level as far as power can go, the highest level is RK because that's the farthest reaching that the power of God can go. And we have that. As a matter of fact, uh, Jesus said, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth, which means that all of this, the dunamis, the ischis, we broke all of that down last week, exousia, kratos, megaliotis, RK, and energia, all of those powers are in us because of the Holy Spirit. But what I want you to see is, that the word RK means when we're talking about RK power, that's the farthest extremity or to the highest level of power. And as far as it will reach now, what you have to understand and what I have to understand and what we are educating ourselves to, because even though we have heard the word and we've heard these things, we need to continue to renew our minds because this is some serious business that we have to, we have to receive, we have to understand and we have to recognize. Now, what happens here is that God wants you and I to walk in this supernatural manifestation of his revelation. He wants us to walk in this power. Now, the word RK means the outermost extremities of his power. Now, what does that mean for you and I? When he's talking about RK, he's talking about the farthest reaching of his power. So that means that the word RK means, so now Jesus said all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Now, he said in heaven. Now, heaven here, he's talking about the third heaven. He's talking about where God lives. Now, then he said, and in earth. So that means that the power that you have here on earth reaches all the way to the throne of God. That's how much power is in you and it is in me. Now, that means that this power extends from the ground up through the earth's atmosphere into the first heaven, which is above the clouds, where Satan's kingdom is, is set up, past the clouds into outer space, which is the second heaven. And you have to understand something about outer space, because when God created the heavens and the earth, he spoke his word. Now, his word is a continual creative force, which means that the, the, the heavens are expanding and they're still expanding. So in order, see, this is why you can't get to where God is in the third heaven ever unless God takes you there. And the reason, one of the reasons why is because the universe is still expanding and it is continually expanding because the word of God never ceases. So when God created everything, the word just went out there and just started creating everything and everything is expanding. Now, guess what happens now? So that means as far as you can go, if there was, if God would give us uh, the technology and the protection to create a rocket ship or a spaceship or something that could fly into outer space. And I'm not just talking about around the moon or whatever, but I'm talking about far and keep going, you know, like in Star Trek, we would go to where no man has ever gone and just keep going past that and going uh, into warp speed and going out into the universe into places and where it just keeps expanding. The further out you go, your power still is in authority. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Your authority extends all the way through the second heaven and all the way to where God is. So when the ship could go no further, when it just, you could, cause see, you'll never get out of the second heaven in a natural way. And the only way that you could get to where God is, is God would have to take you there or translate you there. 
where, and even there you have power and authority in heaven. That's why God said to you. And he said to me, he said, he said, I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth is already bound in heaven. And whatever you loose or release on earth is already loosed or released in heaven. So your authority comes from the throne of God. And why I'm saying that is this, this is why RK is so important. That means that your power is in full force at all times in all of existence. So no matter where you go, the power of God is in full force and ready to explode and pound and expand in any way, shape or form or direction that you release it in. You and I have been created by God after our salvation to become supernatural human beings to operate and mimic the life of Jesus while he was on the earth. This is what you and I are supposed to be doing. So we're going to have to, with all of the aches and pains and the, and, 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 and the sadnesses and the disappointments and all of that, we're going to have to train our minds to accept the fact that we are supernatural, even if our bodies are trying to rebel, even if our minds are trying to rebel, and we're going to get into all of this today, even if circumstances and situations are, going, are trying to rebel, listen, anything that has been created, anything that is in existence has to submit to the power of God that's in you. So you don't have any circumstance or situation. There's no situation. There's no sickness. There's no disease. There's no attack that can come up on you that you don't have the ability and the power to change. This is why Jesus said in Matthew chapter 28, he said again, what he said was, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore, because, because I got power, you go and you go and teach the nations and you baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And you teach them to observe all things whether whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. So because he has the power, he has sent us. Why did he send us when he says he has all power? Because we have his power. He has given us his power. And so we found out in Acts chapter one, in verse eight, he said, but you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. So we, I want you to understand this because of the Holy Spirit on the inside of you and I, God has given us all power. And that power extends from the earth throughout all of whatever is created and whatever is expanding still, even to the throne room of God in the third heaven, your power and your authority exists and it is waiting for you to use it. It's waiting for me to use it. So let's, let's make our minds up that we're going to make ourselves believe this truth. Because it is the truth. It is the word because this is what God said. Now, look at this. I want you to see this. What kind of power do we have? Listen to this. You and I have been given power over Satan in every area of life. We have been given power over Satan in every area of life. Y'all get that? power over Satan. There is not an area in your life that the devil can come in that you and I don't have power over in any area. Now, remember, we are created in the image and likeness of God. Isn't that true? Now, remember how we're created. God is a spirit. And we are a spirit being. So we are a spirit. He has given us a soul, which is our intellect, our will, and our emotions, our ability to think, the cognitive abilities that he has so that we can deal with each other intellectually. 
And then he has given us a body. So we are spiritual, we are soulish or mental, and we are physical. Now, in every area that Satan would try to come and attack us, we have power over it, all power over it. Because the devil will try to attack you spiritually. He will try to attack you mentally. And he will try to attack you physically. And we are well able and capable with the power that we have to resist and to break the devil's power in every area, in every, every realm of life that he may come. Now, I want to share again with you another uh, word here. When we were talking about all power, let's go back to the power words that, that God had given us. Now, you remember the word uh, where he talks about ishkas. And that word ishkas is a very interesting word because that, that's the power of God. Now, this word ishkas actually talks about the, the actual power that is in us. It means that you have power. You have physical power. And the word ishkas means inside of me, I have supernatural power. The word dunamis, remember the word dunamis means that we have the power. Our power is capable of doing and able to do whatever signs, wonders, and miracles that God would want us to do. So whereas dunamis talks about the capability of our power, Ishkas talks about the exact power that you have. Dunamis talks about what your power makes you able and capable of doing, but Ishkas talks about the actual power. Now, here's an, another thing. And then exousia, that word exousia gives you the right to use that power and he gives you the might so that you can exercise that power whenever God wants you to use it. So you understand now. So when we're talking about the power ishkas, what that word talks about is it talks about power. That power is inside of you. And this power operates in your physical strength. So Ishkas gives you physical power, physical strength, but this word also gives you mental power or mental strength, and it also gives you moral power or moral strength. So inside of you, the power of God, Ishkas, has given you physical strength, mental strength, and moral strength. So you have a complete set to cover every area of your being of power. So if the devil tries to come and attack you spiritually, you have, watch this now, the mental strength and the spiritual strength, the power of God to override any spirit that the devil would bring against you. Any demonic force that the devil would bring against you in the spirit realm, you have the spiritual power of God to overcome anything that the devil would do. If the devil comes to attack you in your mind, which he does all the time, and that's one of his main uh, areas of attack is the mind, our minds, you have mental strength against the devil. Mental strength so that your mind is so strong that no matter what Satan brings to your mind, no matter what thoughts, no matter what visions, no matter what nightmares or dreams or whatever the devil or whatever somebody says or what in, in your windows or or circumstances or situations that come up in your mind to get your mind off of the focuses 
of God's authority, you have the mental strength of God to override everything that the devil does. Because see, what the devil has deceived us into believing is that or when he starts attacking us in our mind, you know, we, 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 we really kind of get a little weak there. But you got to understand, you are not weak in your mind. The devil is just telling you that you are weak in your mind, but God has given you mental strength over the devil. I'm going to prove it to you in a minute when we go to the next verse of scripture. But you have that ability mentally to ward off and to destroy and attack everything that the devil could ever bring to you mentally. Now, mentally, that means bringing back memories of things that have happened to you in the past that would try to keep you handcuffed. You know how something happened to us in the past and, and we've been bound up and handcuffed and, 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 and it's affecting our present and our future. And the devil is trying to keep us bound up. But the Bible says, Jesus said this in, in, in Isaiah 61, that the spirit of the Lord is upon me for he hath anointed me to heal the brokenhearted and to set up captive, set, set, set at liberty them that are bruised and to open the prison doors. So now he understands this, that mentally when the devil has attacked you and I with things in the past, he's put us into these mental prisons to try to keep us locked up in the situations and circumstances that came and produced pain and suffering in our lives. But you need to understand, and I need to understand this day, this moment, while this word is is going forward that the prison doors have been opened. You have been given mental strength to overcome every mental attack that the devil has brought under you and is trying to keep you bound with, and you have the ability to now override it. That's why the Bible said the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the overthrowing of strongholds and casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of Christ and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Your weapon that you have is the mental power that the Holy Ghost has given you in your mind. So it is time for you and I, and, and, and I want you to understand this day, I speak unto you now that you exercise your mental power to override every thought, every attack, every nightmare, every dream, every remembrance of any circumstance, situation, abuse, or any attack or sadness or sorrow or calamity that has happened in your life. And I speak unto you right now, you have the mental strength to override it, to overthrow it, and to cast it down, and then to bring those thoughts to the obedience of Christ. And the obedience of Christ is this, no matter what happened to me, because see what the devil tries to do is he tries to make you and I identify identify with our past pain and he tries to make us feel like we are what happened to us or we are what they said to us or we are what was done to us but i want you to know you are not what they said about you you are not what was done to you you are not what happened to you you are beloved now we are the sons of god oh, come on somebody and it doth not yet appear what we shall be but we know that when he shall appear we shall be like him for as he is come on the bible Bible says, so are we now in this world. So if you are like him now in this world, then you are not what they said you were. You are not what happened to you. You are not what went on in your life. Yes, those things happen, but they cannot define you now. You now understand and recognize and know that you have spiritual and physical and mental strength and ability to override and to overcome and to cast down and to throw down everything that has ever happened to you in your mind, every thought and make your mind begin to believe what the word says, because Proverbs 23, 7 says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So if the devil can continually get you and I to keep thinking about what is going on and has gone on in the past, that's why the Bible said, forgetting those things that are behind. God understands that you're going to remember everything that took place. He knows that there's uh, stuff that has happened that has been traumatic to us. We'll remember when he's talking about forgetting those things, what he is actually talking about is exercising your authority over all of those things that have happened to you in the past and remove their power from affecting your life anymore. That means that now when you think about it, it is just something that happened. It'll be a fact 
fact, it'll be an event that took place, but the feelings and the captivity and the woundings and the hurt, God has given us the authority mentally to take those things and bring them under the, 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 the submission of the word of God so that we be healed and we be free and that we'll walk in the peace of God. You have that authority and that uh, ability so that once you do that and you break that thing's hold over your mind, then you can still have a thought. You can still think about what happened, but it won't bring those feelings of captivity and abuse and, and frustration and insecurity and inferiority any longer. It'll just be data that's in your mind, but God has given you the power to overcome it. Now, don't sit there and say, oh, I can't do that. Yes, you can. God has given us that ability, and what we're going to have to do, we're going to have to start warfaring and fighting with the power that we have. This is why I'm taking my time and taking all these weeks to teach you about the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit has been given unto us to free us from everything that the devil has done to us ever since we were born, and even before we were born. And so we're going to see what the Word of God says. I'm, I hope y'all are hearing what the Holy Ghost is saying to us today, because this is some powerful stuff. Now, going back, we have power over Satan in every area of our lives. There's not an area in your life that you do not have power over Satan. Now, go with me to Luke chapter 10, verse 19 and verse 20. This is the scripture that we quote every service when we are coming out uh, and closing off our services. Look at Luke chapter 10, and we're going to look at verse 19 and verse 20. And in Luke 10, 19 and 20, the word of God says this, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Do you see that? And nothing shall by any means hurt you. That's what God says in his word. And, and what does that mean? That means, God, you remember all of those past pains? You have power now to break the hurt from those powers, those things that have happened to you in the past. He said, now, verse 20, notwithstanding in this, don't rejoice that you got power over the devil. He said that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. He says, don't rejoice over the power rejoice in the fact that you're saved, that you're born again, that you're in heaven, that you have been passed from death unto life. You've been translated into the kingdom of God's dear son. And because of that, now you can walk in the power of God. The power of God is only available to us because we are born again. So let's stop focusing on the power and start focusing on our salvation because what, it, listen to this. The Bible says this, in John 1, 1, but as many as received him, Jesus, to them gave he the power or the right to become the sons of God, even to them that believe upon his name. So when you become a son or a daughter of God, you are in the family of God. You have the DNA of God. You have the ability of God. You have the life of God. You have the authority of God. You have all of the resources that God has to back you up and to walk in front of you and on the side of you and over above you and behind you and beneath you. God covers you completely through salvation. And because of that, that word salvation, soteria, meaning safety, soundness, preservation, healing, deliverance, and prosperity. I'm trying to get you to understand God through his salvation. And we're going to talk about that later on in this message, but God uh, through salvation has made us free from everything that the devil could do in our our lives. So he says, I have given you power. Now let's get back to that. And let's see, let's break this down. God says, behold, I have given you power. Okay. So this power that God gives us is the word exousia. Now remember exousia, exousia means permission and it means the authority and the right and the liberty to act. It's the power to do something. All right. So when, when God talks about, I have given you power, he's saying, I've given you authority to not only do something, but I've given you permission to act. 
so that this word here con combines the idea of, watch this now, the right to act and the might to perform it. You got the right and the might. This word denies the presence of a hindrance. That's the kind of power that you have, the authority to deny the presence of anything that would hinder you. And it is causing you to walk in the supernatural revelation of God. So here God now shows you, behold, I give unto you. Jesus gave you and me exousia. And that is the right to act with the power that we have the right to use the power, the ishkas that we have, the right to use the physical, mental, and moral and spiritual strength that God has given us. We have that ability to exercise the power of God. And not only do we have that, the power, but we have the right to use it. So I want you to understand, it's interesting that God would use this word. He said, I have given you exousia, authority over and the right to use. Now he says, I have given you authority to tread. So your authority gives you treading power. Watch this. Now let's get back into this and see what he's actually saying. I have given unto you power to tread. Now the word tread means to make a beaten path. It means to tread and to trample on something or to have something in subjection. This word is many times used in the Bible uh, when they're treading on a wine press. And, and it also talks about a path or a beaten way. Now, what this word actually means is you're able to trample on things and you're able to make a beaten path and you're, you're able to have something in subjection. Now, in order for you to tread on something, listen to what I'm saying now. In order for you to tread on something, that means you got to be walking on it. Isn't that true? That means whatever you have authority to tread on has to be under your feet because you can't tread on something that's above you. You can't tread on something that's next to you. You can only tread on things that are beneath you. Now, the word here, Jesus says, I have given you the might or the power and the authority to use that power to make a beaten path, to trample over, to bring into subjection, and to watch this now manifest absolute strength like you're treading on a wine press. Now let's take a look at what they would do in a wine press. They would have the grapes and uh, laid out and, and, and the grapes that were, you know, nice f fat, juicy grapes. And they would put them in a wine press and people would actually tread on top of the grapes. And what they would do is by walking on top of the grapes, the pressure from the foot of stomping and stepping up on the grapes, the foot would exert so much pressure on the grape because you know the grape, it has that little skin around it. And then under the skin, it has the meat of the grape and the juice of the grape. And so now what happens is when they, when they tread on the grape, the foot has so much pressure, it has more pressure coming down from the foot then the skin of the grape and the, and the meat of the grape and the juice of the grape can withstand. So when the foot stomps on the grape, the pressure from the foot explodes the skin of the grape and it bursts it open and it causes the meat of the grape to, to spill out and the juices to spill out so that everything that is in the grape is now spilled out and it is no longer within it's, uh, it's, it's protective skin. Now notice what God is saying here. He says, I've given you the ability to trample on or to make a beaten path or a beaten way. You remember, uh, how many of you used to walk in school? Uh, the, I, I may be dating myself but back, back in the day when we used to walk to school and, and how many of you ever noticed, and you may know in your neighborhoods or something, those houses that were corner houses. And if there were a lot of children that was on that block and a lot of times, you know, when we're going down the street and going on a block and you get to a corner house, 
And instead of walking down the sidewalk all the way to the end uh, and then turn on the other sidewalk going perpendicular, you know, we always like to cut across somebody's grass so that we wouldn't have to go all the way around. And what would happen is you keep walking over that same uh, pathway of grass. And the more that the feet would tread on that pathway of grass, you ever seen somebody's house and maybe on the end of the grass or something, uh, it's grass and then there's dirt where there's no grass growing now. And it's just like a pathway cutting across the corner. I have seen that happen many times in my life. And so I want you to understand what that has done is because that grass has been trampled on over and over. Listen to what I'm saying. The grass has been trampled on over and over, not just one time. You can walk across the grass one time time the grass will bend and it'll lay down but it'll stand back up you can do it two or three or four times it'll uh, bend and then stand back up but what happens is when there is a consistent and a purposeful walking across that path on the same uh, on the same path and it's consistently over and over and done over and over and over the grass will lose its ability to resist the pressure of the feet that keep walking over it until finally the pressure will get down and will break and destroy the roots of the grass and the grass will not be able to grow and there will just be dirt there now it's going to take a process of continually walking over that you understand what i'm saying it's taking a process of continually treading and trampling over it and see this is the problem that we as christians have we want to speak and we want to rebuke a devil or rebuke a demon or a situation one time and then if we don't see that thing beaten down and trodden down then we get discouraged and we get frustrated and we get tired and then we leave it alone because we say it doesn't work but you have to understand that the word tread means to trample over and over and over and over and over it's like what god said he said my word is like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces and now notice if you've ever seen any movies of people in prison when they take them to the brickyards or something and they got these big boulders and they give them hammers and they begin hitting those big boulders and they keep hitting them and it seems like nothing is happening to the boulders well what is happening is they got to continually keep pounding the boulders because they're trying to break the boulders down into little pieces that's what they're trying to do and so now what god says is that my word is like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces that means you got to keep pounding that rock and pounding that rock and pounding that rock and then there's going to be one pound that you're going to do after many pounds and that rock is going to explode into splinter into all many pieces now you have to understand something about a rock the rock is its strongest. A boulder is the strongest at its center core. Not the outer core that you're hitting, but the very center core, that's where the strength of the rock is. So every time you hit that boulder, the vibrations go down from the outer part of that boulder and it goes down to the inner core and the inner core of that boulder because it has been hit and that pressure has hit that inner core, it becomes weaker at its center core. Now, it's going to take a while for you to keep beating it, but that center core is going to keep getting weaker and weaker and weaker because the center core of the rock is holding the whole boulder together. But as you continually pound on the boulder, the boulder is getting weaker in its resistance against you to stop its ability from being exploding. And so what happens? You keep hitting it until finally the center has gotten so weak that it can only take one more hit. And if it hit me, it hit me one more time, I'm just going to I'm not going to be able to hold this boulder together. Everything's going to blow up. And you hit it that last time and that last pound, that last vibration goes to the center and core and the whole thing explodes this is what jesus is saying here he says i've given you exousia the authority and the power the right to use the power so that you can trample on serpents and scorpions so now notice this you have the ability listen to what i'm saying because what happens is we've been getting attacked in our mind and we've become wearied in our mind because it seems like man i've been dealing with this for i don't know how long and i keep dealing with it and, deal, and and sometimes we get weary and we get frustrated but god said i have given you authority 
I have given you ability and I have also given you authority or the right to use the power. Now that ability means he has given you the strength to continue to pound the boulder. He has given you the strength to continue to walk on and to tread on uh, uh, the, 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 the power of the enemy. You have that ability. So what happens is we have to renew our minds to the fact that however long it's going to take this thing to break, I'm going to keep putting that pressure on it because I got the authority and the Holy Spirit is giving you the ability and the stamina and the strength and the patience to keep pounding the rock. You've got that power on the inside of you. So from this point forward, every time uh, if there's been something you've been praying about or speaking against or coming against and the thing hasn't stopped yet, that's okay. Because I want you to understand today, the Holy Spirit is letting you know he is releasing into your body. Even as I'm speaking, he is releasing that authority in you so that he will continually give you stamina and strength to keep pounding, to keep treading, to keep walking, to keep speaking, to keep coming against it. Because the day is coming when that thing is going to explode and it will no longer be a hindrance in your life. Because the Bible says that exousia, it denies the presence of a hindrance. So whatever it is that the devil is put in your life to hinder you, God is going to deny that thing access. It's going to be destroyed and removed from your life. That's what he says here when he says, I have given you the power, notice, to tread. I have given you the power, the ability to trample, to make a path. And to get, so now notice what else is happening here. Everything, watch this now, this is very interesting. Everything that the devil, watch this now, would try to do to your life. Everything that the devil has tried to do to bind you, to hold you up, to keep your finances, to keep your health, to keep your mental health, to keep your relationships, to keep your success, to bind up your businesses, to bind up your ministries, to bind up your ability to be fruitful and multiply, to bind up your ability to serve God, every attack that the devil has done. And he has these things built up and they are there to suppress you. But now notice, remember the grape, the skin around the grape is trying to protect the meat of the grape and the juice of the grape and keep it inside the grape. That's what the devil is trying to do to you. See, he's trying to use these things and he's trying to use these things to continue to hinder you. And he thinks that his authority is the skin around his ability to keep you bound. But God says, when you put your foot pressure, come on somebody, and your mouth pressure, and you start pounding that thing that the devil has that he has been trying to bind you up with, when you exercise that pressure, the pressure that you exert is more than the pressure that the devil has used uh, to keep you bound can handle. And if you keep pushing and treading and trampling, you're going to explode that thing that the devil has been using to try to keep you bound. And that thing is going to explode and dissipate. But now you got to understand the pressure that you use is greater than what the devil's ability is to withstand your pressure. Oh, you got to put the pressure on the devil. See what had devil has been doing is making us think that he, uh, we, uh, his pressure has the ability to withstand what we're doing, but that's a lie. Your power and your ability has the ability to withstand everything that he's throwing at you. So now notice what he says here, because this is so powerful and this is so magnificent here. He says, behold, I have given unto you power to trample, to make a beaten path on serpents and scorpions. Those are type of Satan and his demonic spirits, his kingdom. So you're able to tread on serpents and scorpions or Satan and his in and his kingdom. Anything that's in the kingdom of Satan, you have the power to tread upon them. Now notice it says, and over all, do you see the word all there? All the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now the Bible says, somebody say the Bible says. Somebody said, I'm, 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 I'm looking at what the Bible says. All right. Now the Bible says this, notice what the Bible says and over, you have power to make a beaten path and to trample upon 
all the power of the enemy. Now here, here, this word power is not exousia. This word power is dunamis. Now, what does the word dunamis mean? It means the capability and the ability to do miraculous things. It means the capability and the ability to do signs and wonders. It, it, it means the ability of the devil. So that means that God has given you the power to trample on Satan's ability, and he's given you the power to trample on, watch this now, everything that the devil can do. He has given you the authority to use that power to trample on the ability of the devil. Now, we need to understand something. The word dunamis means the miraculous power, the capability and the ability to do things and to do miraculous things. Now, you need to understand that Satan, even though he's a fallen angel, he can do some things and he can do some powerful things and he can do some what we would call miraculous things. And when we're talking about miraculous outside of the realm of the norm. All right. So now we understand, well, what, 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 what kind of miraculous things are you talking about, Apostle? Well, you remember when God sent Moses to deliver the children of Israel from Pharaoh in Egypt and Moses went before Pharaoh and he had his rod and God told Moses to throw down his rod. And so Moses threw down his rod because he was, God had told Moses before he even sent him there, he said, I'm going to make you and you're going to do signs and wonders and I'm going to bring Israel out through my signs and my wonders to let them know that I am, I am that I am. And, 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 and you're going to be a God in their eyes as far as how I'm going to move through you. They're going to see my actions through your works. And so God said that to Moses. And so when God told Moses to throw that rod down in front of Pharaoh on the ground, when Moses did that, the rod that Moses had turned into a live slithering serpent. Come on, somebody. Now that right there is miraculous. This was not a magician's trick. This was an actual serpent that God had turned into the rod had turned into a serpent. When that was thrown down in front of Pharaoh, what Pharaoh did was he went and called for his magicians, his soothsayers, and they came and they had their, their rods. And so they threw their rods down on the ground and their rods turned into serpents. See, they were operating under the power of Satan. Satan had the ability to turn their rods into living serpents, into live serpents. But what took place? See, Satan's got some power. You need to understand. See, a lot of times I think people start, especially Christians, and they're walking in authority in the word. Uh, many times people start uh, belittling Satan's power. Now, notice what happens now when, 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 when their rods turn into serpents, then the rod that Moses had thrown on that had turned into a serpent, his serpent went and ate up all of theirs so that now his magicians had no more rods and Moses then rod turned back into uh, Moses, the serpent turned back into a rod in Moses' hand. And so it was showing you the power of God over the power of Satan, that God's power just eats up, gobbles up, eats for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and snacks. Anything that the devil can do, God can gobble it up right quickly. You need to understand that. And so we need to see this, that the power that the devil has, the ability that the devil has, when, when people are demonized, you need to understand. See, a lot of times over here in the United States, many times Christians don't see many actual manifestations of Satan's power and how demons can operate and, and, and do things, how they can make shades go up and down in rooms and make doors and windows open up and make beds move in bedrooms. See, all these things are possible, and the devil does these things because he wants to intimidate people. But you need to understand, he is able to use demons to enter into the bodies of humans and give those humans supernatural strength. You remember the Gadarean demoniac who had somewhere between three and 6,000 demons in his body. And he lived in the cemetery 
Mary, and they would come and try to chain him with chains and fetters, and he would just break them. And he lived in the cemetery until Jesus was walking by one day. And when the demons and the men saw Jesus, they saw the power of God that denied the presence and, and denied the, the presence of a hindrance. And so what that the, the demons do, they ran to Jesus and, and threw the man and the man fell down at the feet and the demons cried out, what have we to do with thee, Jesus? Has thou come to torment us before the time? They understood that Jesus has power over them. And they knew that when Jesus exercised his authority over them, they were going to feel pain. You need to understand that every time the power of God is exercised against Satan and against his demonic spirits or against his fallen angels, listen to what happens. They feel pain. That is why the Bible said, submitting yourselves therefore unto God and resist the devil and he will flee from you. And that term flee means to run as in stark terror. Why would somebody be running from something as in stark terror unless they were afraid of being destroyed? and having pain. The pain of the word of God, which is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. The word God said is like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. The word of God is like fire coming out of the mouth. The word of God is like a two-edged sword. Can you imagine a fire, a fire, a hammer, a two-edged sword? It's like many waters, rushing waters. And so the word of God and then the sound of the word is so powerful that it will blow out the eardrums if the very ears hear the very volume that God could speak at. All of this comes out of a Christian who when you are walking in the authority of God, this is what's happening in the supernatural spiritual realm. And so when you begin to resist the devil and the Bible tells us that you resist the devil in the faith, in the word of God, in what God has told you when you do that and you believe it, then the devil will run from you as in stark terror because he knows what's about to hit him. It's a whole lot of pain and it's a whole lot of heartache and headache and he doesn't want that. So he leaves you alone. This is what you need to understand. So when he says, I've given you the ability and I've also given you the right to use that ability to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all, I mean, I've given you the ability and the might. I've given you exousia over all the ability of the devil. And then he says something that is so powerful here. He says, and then he says, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing, absolutely nothing. There's nothing the devil can do that can bring irreputable damage to your life that God won't undo and destroy. I don't care how many lies the devil tells on you. God knows how to protect your reputation. I don't care what sickness the devil throws at you. God is a healer. I don't care what mental attacks the devil sends into your mind. God is a deliverer. God operates in power. God operates in authority. God operates in might. God operates in supernatural revelation and in supernatural ability. So this is what God does. He's, he's very good at this and he moves through this and he exercises his ability over Satan and over everything that the devil would try to do. So I want you to understand that you have this power to trample. All right, now let's take a look at this same verse and we're going to look at it in the amplified bible and notice what the scripture says because it's this is what the scripture says in the amplified he says behold i have given unto you authority and power to trample upon serpents and scorpions and physical and mental strength and ability there's ishkas Remember, physical and mental strength and ability over all the power or that's the of the ability that the enemy possesses and nothing shall in no way or in any way harm you. You see that he has given you and I mental strength and ability and physical strength and ability. So even if the devil comes at you physically with something, he will give you the physical strength release it into you to overcome whatever it is the devil is doing. Remember Samson and how God's anointing would come upon him when the Philistines came and he would exercise supernatural strength against them. God has the ability because the Holy Spirit, who is the power of God, is on the inside of you. And the Holy Spirit will give you supernatural physical strength against what the devil is doing to you when it is needed. 
He also gives you supernatural mental strength and ability against the devil. That is the ishkas of God. That is the ability to undo and to break down any attack that the devil would bring to you. And you can bring so much power over the devil's head. You can bring so much might over the devil's head that he has no way that he can stop you from doing what God's called you to do. Let's look at that one more time. He says here, because this is so interesting and this is so powerful. I pray that you all are getting this word today. I pray that this word is ministering to you today. He says, behold, I have given you authority and power. That means I've given you the right and the might to trample, to tread, to make out a beaten path upon serpents and scorpions, that's Satan and his kingdom. And I have also given you physical and mental strength and ability over all, somehow they say, oh, over all the ability that the enemy possesses and nothing shall in any way harm you. This is the promise of God. This is the authority of God. This is the might of God. This is the ability of God. God has released into you and I supernatural power to overcome everything that the devil could ever do to us. And what you and I are going to have to do, we're going to have to renew our minds according to Romans chapter 12. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, or don't fashion your thinking to the way that the world thinks. Don't fashion how you act to the way that the world acts, but be transformed. Get a metamorphosis to take place to give you a complete and total change from how the world acts and, and be transformed into a man or a woman of God by the renewing of your mind. By renewing your mind to the word, by studying the word and retraining your mind and teaching your mind what the word says and not what the devil's lies have been telling you. Then he said that you may be able to prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. This is what God wants you to do. This is what God wants me to do. This is what God wants us all to do. Now, that's the work that we have to do. Remember 2 Timothy 3, 16, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We're going to have to study. The Bible says in Jeremiah that you're going to have to, watch this now, meditate upon this word day and night. We are going to have to retrain our mind because think of, if you really think about it, look about every day when you look, if you turn on the news, if you turn on the television, if you turn on the radio, if you just go outside, if you get on your phone and you get on the Internet, if you go on uh, uh, Facebook, if you go on uh, 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 whatever uh, all of the other apps are on there, you will find that there's so much evil. There's so much carnality. There's so much against God that's bombarding you on every hand and on every surface. Not even to mention the fact that we still have a sin nature on the inside of us that still is lusting and passionately lusting and desiring to do evil and wicked, to love, to know and to produce evil all that's on the inside of us then all this other stuff on the outside i'm telling you we are bombarded every day that's why god said you got to renew your mind and you got to meditate on the word day and night you got to that don't mean you got to have a bible open and you're walking around with your head stuck in the bible and you run into a chair or you you're outside and you walk out in the middle of a street and get hit by a truck because you're reading the bible no it means you meditate on the word you're thinking about the word the word meditate means to chew to mutter say it over and over like a cow chews curd and then he swallows it and it goes into another stomach and then he, he he chews something else and then he brings that which he's already chewed back up and then he begins to chew it again to go back into his stomach that's meditating on it that's chewing it and as the chop cow takes green grass that's solid as he continues to meditate on that grass and chew on that grass he turns the green grass that's solid into white milk that's liquid listen this is what you do when you meditate 
meditate on the word. The word takes you who was born in sin and in iniquity did your mother conceive you. It takes you who has been denom uh, who has been dominated by your sin nature. And as you meditate on the word, it changes you from a sinner and it changes you from a Christian who is bound up by the devil and turns you into, watch this now, a supernatural man or a woman of God who is able to prove the will of God. You and I have this ability on the inside of us to destroy the works of the devil. He cannot stop you and he cannot stop me from doing what God has called us to do. He will throw hindrances. The Bible says it like this. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth them out of them all. The Bible says there is no temptation that is taken you, but such as is common to man. But God will with the temptation also provide a way to escape that you may be able to bear it or to bear up in it while you're dealing with it. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me and thy rod and thy staff that comfort me. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. For great is the peace of those that walk in the things of God. For he is our peace. And because he is our peace, we have peace with God. We are not at war with God, but we are God's children and we have fellowship with him. And we have the peace of God, which means we are now walking around in divine calmness. And we, we understand that God has everything uh, protected and he has everything taken care of. So we don't have to spend our days worrying and, and stressing out any longer and taking Valiums and pills and, and drinking and doing all of these other kind of things to relieve the pain when we have the peace of God that passes all understanding. And God will keep you calm and will keep you steadfast in the midst of storms. Why? Because he is the great I am and he moves and lives in us. Oh, I pray that you've gotten some out of the word today. Meditate on this word. Meditate on this strength. We have the power of God to overcome every attack and everything that the devil can do to us. Now let's meditate on that. Let's walk in that and let's give God the praise. Praise God. Well, I pray this message has been a blessing to you. And I pray that you continue to walk in the revelation of this power and to walk in the revelation of this authority. Praise God. Next Sunday, we'll come back and we'll start talking about how the Holy Ghost manifests salvation in us and what the Holy Spirit actually does to get you and I to become born again. And I tell you, that is powerful. We're going to see the manifestation of the power of God again as we talk about that. So God bless you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Praise God. Be blessed. We'll talk to you again next week. And remember these words that we just quoted from Luke chapter 10. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. And Antioch, don't sign off of the Zoom because we've got things to take care of uh, as soon as I finish closing out the broadcast. So stay on uh, Line Antioch on our Zoom broadcast. Praise God. We'll see you next week in Jesus' name.